Good morning again, brethren. Uh, you know what, brethren? Uh, very quickly, uh, last night um, I had the opportunity to have fellowship via telephone with a beloved brother in the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, a beloved brother, um, a brother whom I could spend literally hours talking with. And the conversation would never go dull, golden, fresh. Ow, Fritz! Beg your pardon, my cat's going crazy here. But um, <laughs> but um, had a golden conversation yesterday. And every chance that I have to speak with the brethren, whether it's by phone, email, or Google Hangouts, I, I, I cherish and treasure every moment. They're so precious. So precious. And Lord, Father, our God, Jesus Christ, please separate the sheep from the goats today. And, um, and to whom who will know of what I speak. <laughs> the squirrels were rampant last night in my attic, in my attic here. And, uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, the uh, golden conversation was cut short because of the critters. And I tried to uh, phone this beloved brother back to, you know, properly, you know, love you, brother, have a good night and whatnot. But uh, I fell asleep. <laughs> but, um, you know, brethren, every chance we get to have fellowship one with another, Treasure that, treasure those moments because they are so precious. They are so precious. The Lord our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is separating the sheep from the goats. There is a separation, you know, there is going on. And uh, with that said, get your King James Bible, the real Bible, and turn in your King James Bible to Psalm 94. Psalm 94 in the King James Bible, the real Bible. Go there. We will be reading in Psalm 94, verses 1 on to verse 15. Okay? Go there, please. We read, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance, vengeance belongeth, shew thyself. Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. Is that the cry of your heart today, Christian? Hi. Tell me something, Christian. Is verse 3 you? Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things, and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? It doth seem that the wicked are prospering in their ways, even more so today, aren't they? Because the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble is rapidly approaching. Verse 5, they break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Look at that, verse 7. Yet they say the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. There is no catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. We have to endure to the end to be saved. Eh. Because judgment is not executed speedily upon the wicked. Uh, therefore, they continue in their ways. I just paraphrased that from the book of Ecclesiastes. Okay. But they say in ver again in verse 7, Yet they say, The Lord shall not see it, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. You ever run into people like that? 
And you know what, brethren? We have to keep in mind verses 5 and 6. They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. I'm going to confess a fault to you. Okay? Brethren, have you ever read Fox's Book of Martyrs? I have. Um, and I spake about this with a beloved brother last night uh, over the telephone about this. Uh, brethren, if you have not read Fox's Book of Martyrs, I encourage you to do so because it helps you to gain a perspective. Now, I truly believe that the catching away of the body of Christ is going to happen any day now because of the propaganda and the fear that the Jesuits have instilled upon the world uh, or the flat earth, whatever you prefer, uh, by their, you know, by this biological weapon that they have created and everybody's paranoid, you know, especially the kids and everybody is just so paranoid, right? But brethren, and especially my countrymen, we have to keep in perspective that the body of Christ has suffered horrendously at the hands of um, Satan, you know, by his church, Roman Catholicism and his army, the Jesuits, okay? The Inquisitions of Spain, the home of Ignatius of Loyola. But um, the body of Christ has suffered for centuries horribly at the hands of the wicked. Not at the hands of God, but of the wicked. And we here in America, and those of you uh, other nations, I'm sure have picked up on this. <clears throat> Brethren, please forgive we of America, because we tend to sometimes put ourselves at the center of everything and think it all revolves around us. When uh, the Lord has been very merciful and gracious to this nation on behalf of his body, save born again King James Bible believing Christians. And it's important to keep in perspective, I believe, especially the sufferings of the past of the body of Christ. That's why I, you know, should read the uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs. What they went through in the past, the brutality of the Roman Catholic Church, we here in America have seen nothing the like. And we need to remember that. We need to keep that in perspective. Hello, I need to keep that in perspective. And my fault is that I lose track of that sometimes. I do. I do. <laughs> Sometimes, brethren, I'm American, all too American. And my brethren of other countries, please forgive me. Please forgive us. But we have to remember that that those of yesteryear have suffered horribly at the hands of the Roman Catholic Church and the Jesuits, Satan and his armies. And all the while they say, verse 7 again, Yet they say, The Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Verse 8. Understand ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, when will ye be wise? Remember what a fool is. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? You think you're getting away with things. <laughs> you think you may be able to fool men. You may be able to fool some of the brethren. 
but there is one who is not fooled, and one you will never fool, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10, He that ch chastiseth the heathen shall not he correct. He that teacheth man knowledge shall not he know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, brethren. Hi. Hi. Talking to, I'm talking to myself as well. Huh? First thing that this uh, that the beloved brother, brother Alexander, uh, and I spake about yesterday. Uh, he said to me the first things that he said. He uh, started talking about consequences, and I just like oh praise the Lord. The Lord was using another brother to kind of like a uh, hey Brad. I love you, brother. And um, I love when the Lord uses another brother to kind of settle you a little bit and bring you back down to reality. He that teacheth man knowledge shall not he know. Verse 11. <laughs> Are you looking at verse 11? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. And the longer you walk with the Lord, blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity. We're supposed to learn from our mistakes. And you know what, brethren? When you are facing the consequences of your actions, you are saved and born again. You are forgiven of your sins. But our Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ, doesn't necessarily take away the consequences of what you have done, even though you are forgiven. Verse 13 again. That thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. Remember this, Christian. The Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. Referencing to the Jews, okay? Okay? The Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, will not forsake the Jew. Even though some of you like to think that he has. Or will. When you deny the catching way of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob. Verse 15, but judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Proverbs, chapter 23, verses 1 unto verse 9. Here's a little bit of warning for you, brethren, sisters. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 9. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Roll that one in, around in your head a little bit, okay? Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Uh, keep your hand there in Proverbs chapter 23. Verse 3 in Psalm 94, Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things, and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? Go back to Proverbs 23, 
Verse 3, Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Verse 4, Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Hold your place here again. Psalm 94, verse 7 and 8. Yet they say, The Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Understand ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, when will ye be wise? Verse 9. He that planted the ear shall he not hear? He that formed the eye shall he not see? And verse 10. He that chastiseth the heathen shall not he correct? He that teacheth man knowledge shall not he know? And of course, verse 11. Why not? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Verse 4 in Proverbs 23. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Verse 6. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Get a load of this. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. But his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. And of course, verse 9. We all need to remember this. Speak not in the ears of the fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. For he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Brethren, those of you who have contacted me outside this platform and medium, whom I've had the privilege to speak with either via phone, email, or Google Hangouts, you know that what you see here is what you get. I am the same person, spirit, soul, and body, here as I am over the phone, over the email, over Google Hangouts. Now, yes, while I do this, I do get a little animated. Animated, excuse me. Yes, I can fly off the handle. Yes, I sometimes lose my cool. Yes. But you also know, when you speak with me personally, what in ever form it is, you also know that I am the same way. You see, brethren, when you speak to me personally, by phone, email, or Google Hangouts, what you see in here is what you get, see? Verse 7 in Proverbs chapter 23. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he. But his heart is not with thee. Brethren, Beware of those who are different in private and different in public. Beware of those people. Because people who are one way in private and another way in public that is a form of manipulation. Are you one person, spirit, soul, and body? Or do you pretend to be one person publicly 
and another person privately. Like I said, those of you who have spoken with me privately, by phone, email, or Google Hangouts, you, you know that this is who I am. A sinner who is chief. Saved by grace through faith. And there ain't nothing good in me. Okay? You know that. But brethren, you really need to take caution of those who are one thing in private and another thing in public. Because those who are one thing here and another thing there, sometimes those lines will cross. And what could happen is that could devastate you on a personal level and it could also break your heart because you are to guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it stem the issues of life. I just paraphrased that and butchered that. Please beg your pardon. Forgive me. But you get the point. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Have you ever come across, brethren, personally, where you just, the, the fellowship that you're having is so, oh, <clears throat> It's a treasure when you can read scripture with each other via phone. I've done that with my brother from the Northeast, uh, from the brother with the brother down south of me, you know, uh, over the email, uh, you know, over Google Hangouts. It's precious. But another thing to remember, are they one here and another there? When you as a saved King James Bible believing Christian, you know, we are to speak to uh, to each other in songs and hymns and spiritual songs. A brother last night to me sang hymns to me to glorify the Lord, to worship the Lord. And I was getting misty eyed. See, that's fellowship, brethren. That's what it is. And you need to beware when you come across someone who, when you want to share these things with them. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That's that kindred spirit. And you have to be aware of that. Now, there are brethren who, uh, for whatever reason, are going through their own little things and stuff like that. We know this, brethren. We know this. And we'll pray for those brethren, if you know any. Okay? But guard yourself. Be on your guard about that. Okay? Especially in these times. Especially in these times. Because, brethren, when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, and I, of course, this is for the brethren. Uh, if you're lost, um, check out, uh, well, when you, if you're a visitor here and not signed in, you'll see the salvation video. Get the Bible and follow that along and get saved. But let's, let's remember. Psalm 94 again. Lord, how, sh how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things? And all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. Skipping down now. Verse 12. On to verse 15. Blessed is the man whom thou chasteneth, Chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity, until the pit be digged for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and the upright in heart shall follow it. Let's 
pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, Lord, bless the times of fellowship that the brethren may have one with another. And Lord, rebuke those of the brethren who are one thing in private and another thing publicly. Correct them. Correct us. Chasten us. That we may be sound in the faith and sanctified and purify our lives and heart. Lord, separate the sheep from the goats, please. And may we be zealous for good works today and bold and courageous. Please strengthen your people and bless your body, Lord Jesus Christ, that we may love one another according to the dictates of your word, the King James Bible, the real Bible. Strengthen the brethren, Lord. Bless the brethren. We, Lord, your saved body, true Bible-believing Christians, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. And uh, strengthen us and quicken us. Provide for us our needs, not our wants. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. And let us keep our eyes upon the prize. Thou, Lord. Hallelujah. And in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen.